the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission generates a Commitment of Traders report that is very valuable in understanding exactly how much money has flowed into index fund investment. This report shows the total long positions for index traders in several major commodities. To figure out the total for other commodity investments, we'll need to use the percentage allocations from the GSCI and Dow Jones AIG indices, as well as the value of the contracts described in the report. We'll start by using CIT data to find the total number of long positions taken by index investors. This is simply the number of contracts that index investors hold long. Next, we'll compare these long positions with the percentage distributions for the GSCI and Dow Jones AIG commodity indices. We'll have to assume that all index investment mirrors the distribution of funds in these two indices. Next, we'll find commodities unique to each index. Kansas wheat, feeder cattle, and cocoa are all unique to the GSCI, and soybean oil is unique to the Dow Jones AIG index. Now we can find the total amount of money invested in each index using these values, the number of long positions from the CIT data, and the values of the actual commodity contracts. The formula is the total investment in the index equals the number of long positions times the value of the contract divided by the weight of the commodity in the index. Then, we simply calculate the total investment in each index using this formula. This chart shows the total investment in each index according to the weights assigned to the individual commodities. For Kansas wheat and feeder cattle, the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index is estimated to have around $165 billion in investment. However, cocoa appears to contradict this, showing around $386 billion. The Dow Jones AIG has about $90 billion invested. Now, it's very important to understand the distinction between the Dow Jones and S&P GSCI and the total investment in index funds. Since the CIT report shows the number of long positions for all index traders, and not just those who hold GSCI and Dow Jones indexes, these calculations assume that most index investment is distributed at similar percentages. I'll use the known number of long positions for other commodities like corn, sugar, and coffee to refine the estimate for the GSCI allocation pattern and then give a definitive estimate for the total investment in commodity indices. If we try to use the simple average for the size of the GSCI to estimate the total amount of index investment, it overstates the value of money in the GSCI. There are fewer long index positions in the market than the model I've built estimates. To find a better estimate for the value of the GSCI, I'm going to reduce the difference between the real and estimated open long positions to zero. This will better predict the amount of money invested at the GSCI allocation spread. By setting the total difference between the CTI and open long contract estimates, the value of the GSCI pattern investment is around $208 billion. Therefore, the total amount of money active in commodity index funds is approximately $300 billion. I want to reiterate that the $300 billion figure I just gave you is an estimate for total investment in commodity index funds. I'm simply using the GSCI and Dow Jones AIG weights as proxies for all index fund investment. The CIT report shows the number of open positions for all index traders, not just those involved in the GSCI or Dow Jones AIG. Therefore, the number I'm giving you is an estimate for everyone, not just investors in those two index funds. Now let's look at some other figures that show activity in other derivatives. The Bank for International Settlements tracks commodity derivative trading in the over-the-counter and exchange-traded markets. In its most recent quarterly review, the bank discovered that the increase in derivative trading was primarily driven by agriculture and energy commodity derivatives. The growth in trading is especially pronounced in over-the-counter markets. The BIS tracks over-the-counter derivatives for G10 countries, major banks, and dealers. 
The notional amounts of outstanding commodity derivatives have increased from less than $2 trillion in 1998 to more than $9 trillion at the year-end December 2007. Notional amounts are the face value of the forwards, swaps, and options that are being traded. The biggest surge came in 2005, when notional values jumped from $1.4 to $5.4 trillion in one year. As this chart shows, most of this value came from commodities other than gold and precious metals. Since notional amounts represent the face value of an instrument, this chart reflects the global increase in commodity prices for oil and agricultural products. High prices and soaring levels of investment create more contracts with higher face values. We can also examine over-the-counter commodity derivatives by looking at their gross market values. Gross market value is the sum, in absolute terms, of the positive market value of all contracts and the negative market value of contracts with non-reporting counterparties. Gross amounts represent the replacement cost of all the outstanding contracts if they have been settled in a reporting period. We can see here that gross market values had a large jump in 2005, but then decreased slightly in 2006 and rebounded in 2007. We see a similar pattern where gold and precious metals have seen less of an increase in gross market value than other commodities, largely driven by agriculture and energy. The BIS also tracks exchange-traded derivatives. Let's look at futures first. This chart shows commodity futures traded on U.S. exchanges, other exchanges, and the total amount of non-commodity futures contracts. As we can see, commodity futures have increased dramatically since the beginning of 2007. This is especially true for commodity futures traded on exchanges outside of the United States. This could include ICE, LME, and the Dubai Oil Exchange. It's important to note that non-commodity futures contracts include interest rate, currency, and equity index futures. While non-commodity futures have grown substantially, the sheer volume of commodity traded futures both in the United States and elsewhere is equally impressive. A look at options reveals similar growth. Over 40 million commodity options were traded on exchanges both in the U.S. and abroad. It's also important to note the size of the derivatives market for commodities. At the end of 2007, the notional value for all derivatives was over $9 trillion. The outstanding gross market value was over $800 billion. Now that we've examined the level of investment in commodity index funds and seen the amount of trading happening and commodity derivatives, it's easy to see why some people are concerned about the effects this investment has on commodity markets. Commodity markets are historically small and less regulated than equity markets. So, some people are concerned that this investment may drive up prices or cause other structural problems. It remains to be seen whether or not the investment that has flowed into commodities stays there or if we're in a speculative bubble. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the commodities markets and found it useful and informative. I would encourage you to visit my website, www.econoutlook.net, to get a better view of the charts and graphs in this video. I know they're a little bit difficult to see on YouTube, so you can go to the website, look at them there at your leisure, and study them as you like. Again, I hope you found this look at commodities informative, and I'll be back next week to talk about more economic issues.